Uh, can people at the back hear me? All right, I can. Good morning, everyone. My name is Yojit, and today my group, uh, consisting of Kishore, uh, Joshua, and Iki, are going to be talking about the legalization of marijuana. Next slide. Now, before we begin, we first need to understand what marijuana is. Um, marijuana, or cannabis, is a psychoactive drug that's derived from the cannabis plant found in Central and South America. What gives it its psychoactive nature is the presence of a chemical known as THC, which, when consumed, gives the user a feeling of high sensation. Uh, it's usually um, uh, consumed as a cigarette, however, it's also consumed as an edible. An edible is a food that consists of marijuana in it, like brownies, cookies, and even candy. Next slide. Now, now that we've discussed what marijuana is, we need to understand why people uh, consume it. Rather, what are the effects people get when they consume uh, marijuana? When marijuana is smoked, the THC passes from the lungs into our bloodstream and eventually finds its way into our brain. There, the THC triggers the response, sorry, triggers the release of a hormone known as dopamine, or the happy hormone. Uh, dopamine is responsible for people feeling relaxed and even euphoric. Now, depending on the dosage of um, marijuana smoked, it can have varying effects on the user. Some of these effects include uh, hallucinations, um, hallucination, psychosis, altered senses, and even mood alterations. Uh, next slide. Now, some of the countries that have, now there are countries that have legalized marijuana already, and some of them include Costa Rica, uh, Canada, Mexico, Georgia, South Africa, the Netherlands, and 18 different US states. Now, these aren't all the countries that have legalized it. As the previous team said, uh, even countries like Spain legalize marijuana. Um, and there are still countries that are discussing legalizing it. Next slide. Okay. Now, oftentimes, when the topic of marijuana is brought up, two terms will always come up. That is legalization and decriminalization. But most people don't know the difference between the two terms. Most people think that they mean the same thing, when in reality, they don't. Legalization refers to the removal of all legal prohibitions placed on that drug. That is, it allows for the sale, consumption, and possession of the drug. Decriminalization, on the other hand, only removes the legal prohibition placed on the uh, consumption and possession of the drug. However, there is still a criminal penalty placed on the sale of the drug. Now, I'll hand over the presentation to Iki who will discuss one of the benefits of legalizing marijuana. So, my name is Hiki. Can the people at the back hear me? Okay. And today I'll be talking about the medicinal benefits of marijuana. So, marijuana can be made into treatments or medicines that are good therapy for cancer, chronic pain, chemotherapy induced nausea and vomiting, as well as addiction. So for cancer, according to a review done by Rocha et al. in 2014 that focused exclusively on the anti-tumor effects of gliomas. So at here, gliomas is a type of tumor that starts in the glial cells of your brain, which is the part that is responsible for your nervous system. And in all 16 of the in vivo studies, found an anti-tumor effects of cannabinoids. Cannabinoids refers to all the components that are in cannabis. And the in vivo studies here are referring to any experiments, research that is done with or within a living organism, which includes animal studies as well as human clinical trials. And the anti tumor effects of can cannabinoids include preventing the spread of malignant cells into surrounding tissues as well as reducing unwanted growth of blood vessels. And one of the anti-tumoral evidence include reduction in tumor size. So for chronic pain, there are several medical conditions that can cause chronic pain, which include neuropathy, 
cancer pain, rheumatoid arthritis, as well as chemotherapy induced pain. And there are reviews done by Whiting et al. in 2015, as well as all these other researchers that are focused on reducing pain using cannabis. And all of the reviews concluded that cannabis has a cannabinoids have demonstrate the Moses effect on pain. And another study done by Wallace et al. in 2015 found a dose-dependent effect of vaporized cannabis flower on spontaneous play. So the dose-dependent meaning that the effect of it changes according to the doses used. And for the studies, they found out that with the high dose of 7% THC has showing the strong, strongest effect size. So for chemotherapy induced nausea and vomiting, any medicines made by cannabinoids or marijuana has been approved to be in particular there's Nabilon and Dronabino, which were approved as early as in 1985 to treat patients with uh, chemotherapy induced nausea and vomiting. And these patients in particular, they respond they failed to respond adequately to conventional antimatic treatments, which is why they are forced to use these two medicines. And in another study done by Smith et al. in 2015, the investigators stated that cannabinoids were highly effective and similar to conventional antimatic treatments in treating chemotherapy induced nausea and vomiting. And at last, in a review done by Cho in 2018, they concluded that when controlling for vomiting and nausea, oral cannabinoid was equally as effective as other treatments. So for addiction, there are mainly two main components in cannabis. One of them was THC, which was previously measured by Yojif, and another one would be cannabidol or CBD for short. And one of the function of CBD is to modulate various neuronal circuits involved in drug addiction. According to Pratt Homo et al. in 2015, their human studies presented some evidence of a beneficial effect, impact of CBD on cannabis and tobacco dependence. Also, CBD has several therapeutic, therapeutic properties that could be useful in treatment of addiction disorders, such as its prosthetic effect on stress, vulnerability, as well as neurotoxicity. And at last, in the research done by Morgan et al. in 2013, smokers treated with CBD show a significantly reduced number of cigarettes smoked by about 40% during their treatment. And that's all for my part. I'll pass it to Kishore to talk about the mitigation of organized crime. Hello everybody, my name is Kishore and I'll be talking about how legalizing marijuana will help mitigate the war on drugs. Next slide please. Lives and resources can be spared if the notion of punishing drug users was shifted, harm, and harm reduction advocates say. According to Vox, the U.S. had spent over $1 trillion on anti-drug related efforts in 2012. Adding to that, 82% of the increase in drug arrests were marijuana-related offences, and 1 million Americans are sent to prison every year. These statistics highlight the social consequences of the war on drugs, especially marijuana. Some critics feel that the state could govern and regulate the production and sale of marijuana. What this means is that instead of persecuting and punishing, any governing body should look to what is in the best, what is in the best interest of the people which is what we'll delve into in the following slides. Next slide, please. The idea of mitigating the war on drugs by legalizing marijuana revolves around the theory that when a government body legalizes marijuana, which according to Statista.com is the most widely used drug all over the world, consumers rely on obtaining the drug from a reliable, from a reliable source as it's to their best interest. Given the option, would you rather get your marijuana from a shady looking person in a hoodie standing in the middle of a dark sketchy alleyway or a nice air-conditioned and legal marijuana dispensary? I'm assuming it's the latter. 
by legalizing marijuana, this would defund organized crime syndicates such as cartels and the mafia, as these organizations rely hugely on their revenue derived from the distribution of illegal narcotics. Without this, mon without this money, these organizations would lose all leverage such as manpower and the ability to coerce and bribe, you know, because it's not like they can take out a loan from the bank. The government would then be able to destabilize this, this criminal organizations and implement sanctions regulating the dosages of marijuana allowed and abolish the, other, the use of other harmful drugs. With that being said, this model theory relies heavily on the distributing body to be that of a, govern, of a governing body, not a for-profit organization, as that can lead to abuse of the system. Next slide, please. Next, moving on to the inhibiting factors. The first inhibiting factor to this model theory is that dominant criminal organizations have already established prominent supply and distribution systems. It is important to note that most of these organized crime syndicates have been around for decades and years and have a deep-seated system involved when it comes to the distribution of narcotics. This poses a problem because in reality, the legalization of marijuana will not be universal. Let's say the best case scenario is all the states in the US legalize marijuana. What is stopping crimes in the kit from diversifying to other countries? By the United States legalizing marijuana on its own terms, it won't really cripple these, these crime syndicates enough as they can just look elsewhere to fill in their demands. Next slide, please. Following this, there are several issues pertaining marijuana legalization. The first being finding the right port. Okay. High marijuana potency levels may cause overdoses and death. Secondly, the government body needs to set an age limit deemed fit. Marijuana use during adolescence has been linked to harming the development of the brain, which is why we can see that most states in the US yet that have legalized marijuana has set the age limit at 21 and above. Another issue is the pricing of marijuana. If marijuana is priced too high by government entities, this may give a chance for crime syndicates to lower their marijuana prices and gain their customers back. Next slide, please. Now I'm going to be talking about how legalizing marijuana specifically may set the stage for abolishing other more harmful drugs. Marijuana is most commonly known as the gateway drug, which according to the National Institute of Health means that marijuana is usually the first recreational drug a person tries before being likely to explore other illicit substances. As such, the governing body gaining primary control over a gateway substance may prove to be the greatest leverage yield in preventing the distribution of other substances or even banning the use of other substances completely by making sure that only marijuana is avail available to the general public, thus eliminating the demand for other illicit substances. Now I'll be passing it on to Joshua to talk about this, the decriminalization of drugs in Portugal. Hi, I'm Joshua. Uh, before I start, can everybody hear me? Great. Yeah, because I'm going to talk about the drug use in Portugal that it started in 2002. And it doesn't mean that it's decriminalized, they're legal. It doesn't mean they're legalized. Because, however, the possession is about the same where they, when they use, when Portuguese use the drugs, they are charged for money, uh, raising for money and community service, not sending into prison. Okay. And uh, according to Time.com, where a study is done in 2015, it determined that since decriminalizing drug is possible, the capital of social costs needs to decrease by 15%. Next. So here is the little bar chart. And as you can see, Portugal up there is quite small for six compared to, let's say, the United States to 185. Yes. Now things gonna get a little bit racist. And you can see, of course, in the United States, the racism has risen up, especially for using marijuana. For one example is that compared to Black Americans and White Americans, Black Americans tend to frequently get arrested more than white Americans, even though the use of marijuana for both white, Amer white and black Americans are the same. 
So how do we fix this? And actually, no, not yet. Uh, what caused it? Because the loss of how they set it up is not proportional at all, and also overpolicing the black neighborhood. So by fixing this, is legalizing the marijuana that if they legalize, black Americans will not be convicted as a crime for any marijuana consumption. As far well as this is a quote from Gerald Nadler, racially motivated enforcement of marijuana laws has disappropriately impact the communities of color. It's past time to right this wrong nationwide and work to view marijuana use as an issue of personal choice and public health, not criminal behavior. Now this is, which you understand why marijuana is a big concern for in terms of racism. Now I think I'll pass to Yoji to conclude this. All in all, the benefits of legalizing marijuana are quite clear. Um, these benefits include the medicinal benefits, that is, it helps to treat patients with uh, chronic illnesses, people undergoing chemotherapy, and even addiction. It also helps in uh, reducing um, crime, and in countries like the U.S., it helps to mitigate uh, race-based convictions for the use of marijuana. Now, as more research is conducted on the benefits that marijuana has to offer to individuals, more and more people will come in support of it. Although right now, there are people that are hesitant in legalizing marijuana, uh, as more research is conducted, people will change their mind maybe 10, 20 years from now. With that being said, I'd like to end our presentation with a quote from Senator Bernie Sanders. It's time to tax and regulate marijuana like alcohol. It's time to end the arrest of so many people and the destruction of so many lives for possessing marijuana. Uh, thank you for listening to our presentation.